Hi, it's Kirstine, and today I'm doing a science experiment. So we're not doing um, bows or grooming a dog. We're actually testing various methods of um, different methods of testing pH. And then I've got a couple of my shampoos to do the, the final test. So there's this debate of whether or not because when you pH is a um, measure of the hydrogen ions. The more hydrogen ions, the lower the pH is, um, with around 2.4 for vinegar, which I have right here. Um, and then neutral is considered seven, and then anything above seven is um, alkaline. Um, the problem with measuring pH is that it is a measurement of hydrogen ions um, in a liquid, normally water. Um, but when we're dealing with shampoos, I was worried that we were not getting an accurate measure of so that we're, because they're thicker, you see, you know, you've got, this is water for, yeah. One of those is water, one of those is vinegar. I think that's maybe the water, or maybe that. We'll find out when we measure them. Um, but I'm worried that with the thicker solutions, we're not getting an accurate testing when we're doing some of the simpler pH testing, which if you look like, so I've got three different um, types of pH testing. So I've got the strips, I actually got at Petco, um, for aquariums, and this is a five in one because they didn't just have a pH one. Um, so, test pH, alkalinity, water hardness, nitrates, nitrites. Uh, we don't care about the nitrates or nitrites or anything else other than the pH. Um, so, we've got this little strip that we're going to try. And then I bought this little cheap digital, this is about 20 bucks that I got on Amazon. So, we're going to test how accurate that is. And then I got this more expensive digital from thermometer, or sorry, digital pH tester that was actually recommended for use for testing shampoos. Um, so this is a little more expensive, I think it was about $83 on Amazon. So I have calibrated them um, so that they should all, so I have calibrated these two to make sure they're accurate. So the calibration means that I stuck it in a solution of, you know, four pH and then I hit the button and it's like, okay, that's four, so then we can, we can go from there. Um, so those are calibrated. This is not calibrated. Um, basically, with the strips, you dip them in, and then you check the results, and you compare the color to anything here. So we're going to, that's the vinegar. So we're going to start out with, um, this is called pure water. And so it's actually something my dad brought home from his, um, his chemist and so he brought this home from his laboratory. So this is extra special water. Pure water has nothing in it. So um, it's purer than, you know, deionized water or even reverse osmosis water. Um, so we're going to test this. And he said the pH of this can actually vary depending on, I think he said how much carbon dioxide or something is in, in, the, in the air. So we're going to test this and we are going to wait. So it's two to three times. Then we are going to hold facing up, 25 seconds. Okay, we're gonna let that change. In fact, we're gonna get 25 seconds going here. Um, well, we're gonna do one minute, because I can't do 25 seconds. Okay, so we're gonna test, now we're gonna do the cheap one. So we're turning this on. This should be calibrated already. Um, and we're going to submerge this and swish it around for 30 seconds. So while this is swishing and that is changing color, and you'll notice the interesting thing is that this water has no nitrates, nitrites, which it shouldn't have. Um, so that's a good thing. The total alkalinity and the pH so, okay, so I should be able to read this, and it is saying that the pH is, total alkalinity is zero. I don't know if that's right. And that it should be 7.0. Problem with these are you've got this little color that you're comparing it to um, this bottle, and it's really hard to tell the difference. So I'm guessing it's about right there, which is 7.0. Um, and my really expensive one, well, no, this is my cheaper one. 
15 is 10.9. <laughs> That's not accurate. Uh, so I have had a little bit, since I've had this, I have had a little bit of problems getting this one to work. So I don't think the $20 digital pH is very accurate. We're going to try the more expensive one, which I only just received today, but I've had more success with. So this, once it stops flashing, tells, and it goes pretty fast, it'll tell me the pH. And it is saying the pH is 7.39. So according to the strip I got, seven. This one told me it was 11. Um, and so this one's 7.39. Now let's do, so that was kind of a control test. So now let's do the vinegar. Because vinegar should be 2.4. Let's see what this does, because this only reads down to 5.5. So, let's get that going, start, oh, two, three, face it up, and that needs to go for, okay, so let's do this one again, let's turn this off and then turn it back on, okay, so this has to go for 30 seconds, and twirl it around. that is, oddly enough, turning kind of purple. Or maybe I'm reading the wrong path. You know, I'm reading the wrong path. <laughs> okay, so this one, oh no, I was reading the right one. So, this one is saying 5.5. So, of course, that's the lowest it's going. The cheapo thermometer is saying 10. And then we can just go ahead and get rid of the Cheeto one because it's not functioning. Okay, so, so we're going to see what this one says. And this is just kind of make sure that, that it's showing as accurate um, so that when we actually do the shampoos, we know that we're getting a fairly accurate reading. And this is saying, it's still flashing. So, so we're going to try two different, we're just going to do the two. We're going to do the strips. Which is readily accurate. Everyone can get this because you can get them at, you know, aquarium store. So it's say 2.5. So that's 0 0.1 off. That's a little further. Um, but most people, when they're testing their shampoos, are using little strips like this for the little litmus strips. And I believe that it is interfering with the ability to actually read it correctly. So we're going to dip this. And this is my Isle of Dogs stand-up. And I have no idea, let me write off the extra, how much this actually should be reading at. Um, but interestingly enough, it says it has nitrates in it. Nitrates. Yeah, according to this strip, it's saying it has nitrates and nitrates. So now we're going to, while well, that is changing we're going to use our little so this is supposed to be used with any kind of liquids i'm going to swirl it around so that it doesn't have any residue vinegar whatever on there and let's see what it comes up with so This is reading at 7.0. This is saying it's 7.0. And this is still calculated. Oh, there we go. And this one is saying it is 7.5. So that is, just making sure that's water. I love dogs stand up is a 7.5 and we know that um, dogs and cats they have more of a base pH humans have 5.5 pH our skin is that way and uh, dogs and cats are more of a 7 um, so that's actually pretty accurate and these little strips are pretty accurate too so let me rinse that off we don't have any shampoo at all. Or
Okay, I think that probably so well. Now let's do this. Is I wanted to try one of the more medicated shampoos I have on hand. I don't have many shampoos. I'm kind of getting low, so I didn't have many to test. But this is I wanting to do this to see if they are accurate. Um, if when we are testing, um, if we can actually trust when we're getting results. If that is really what it is. Okay, so let's get another strip. And this strip, this shampoo is yellow. So that'll be interesting. And it right away is going towards the nitrates. Okay. Rinse this off. Let's go ahead and try. We've already discovered that these aren't very accurate at lower pHs. And this isn't actually changing any color, and the lowest these strips can read is 5.5. And it's stabilized at 4.9. So we see more of a medicated shampoo is more. Um, basically, the, what this has taught me is that this is a very accurate way of, of testing shampoos. Um, we, people are really concerned, groomers are concerned about having using a pH shampoo that's different from the pH of the skin. Um, and but there's really but but the pH of the shampoo can actually be different and, and used as part of the medicating process where you. Um, something that's more acid or something that's going to be higher cleansing is going to be something more alkaline. Um, so we have the results. So personally, I think these are useless because they're limited. These are limited to 5.5. The one that we did compare it with was just really hard to read because you're comparing this little strip and you've got these shades of green yellow to blue, and so it's really hard to read. So strips are useless, $20 cheap one useless. Uh, so far the $83 looks pretty good. So now I'm going to start testing. I've got a bunch of new shampoos coming on Tuesday. So now I'm going to start testing and see what shampoos, what their pH is, and I'm going to start sharing to let, so we can be more informed when we're buying shampoos and using shampoos as groomers. So thanks for joining, joining me. Thanks. Bye.